Shannon B. Douglas, this is while we were asleep. Okay, take three on the Stanley Milgram experiments video. Um, today's video, I wanted to focus a little bit on, on uh, some psychology experiments that were conducted in the 1960s um, by a researcher by the name of Stanley Milgram. He's quite well known. Um, and uh, famous for several different experiments. Um, one of them was the, uh, the prison experiment where he divided people into two groups, prisoners and guards. And another experiment was the, uh, the, sh the shock experiments. So uh, Milgram was fascinated with the question what what leads people or what can lead people to uh, commit atrocities against other against others and this was following the Nuremberg trials and the testimonies of of Germans from who had lived through and worked through the Second World War and various roles worked in prison camps and loaded Jews onto trains and committed these atrocities and Milgram was trying to figure out what it is and what it was that that led people to commit these things. So he devised an experiment that are known as the uh, known as the shock experiments, where a uh, subject was brought into a laboratory and told that they were participating in an experiment. Um, and that they had to help to administer, uh, um, I guess it was learning and competence um, uh, enforcement, let's say. And the competence enforcement meant that there was a person on the other side of a screen and they were hooked up to electric shocks and that the shocks got incrementally worse. The the more that the person failed to answer questions uh, to do with competence and knowledge. And the experimenter was standing over the shoulder of the subject of the experiment, the person who was administering this fake test. And they were told that the most serious shocks could do significant damage up to and including inducing a heart attack in their in the subject uh, on the other side of the screen and what this experiment proved time and time again was that most people when they were being coerced by an authority figure that being that of the experimenter over the shoulder saying you must complete the task it's part of the experiment you must do this would administer even the most lethal, what they, what they believed was the most lethal level of shock uh, on the subject of this fake experiment. It didn't take very much. And it was only a small percentage of people that pushed back on this. Uh, and what it seemed to prove was that even the most ordinary of us can commit atrocities and participate in atrocities, uh, especially when we are being coerced or bullied or told by authority figures that this is the thing that we must do. So why am I talking about this? I'm campaigning against gender ideology in our society, in our school systems, public school systems, Catholic school systems, how it's being taught and kids are learning it online, how it's being spread through what we believe is social contagion mechanisms, how trans activists are bullying people who disagree or question this ideology, having people investigated. These are extremely powerful methods of coercion, public shame, humiliation, uh, threats of losing livelihood. Uh, and, and those, those mechanisms are, um, are forcing people and putting people in positions where they're just going along 
where they are acting on what they're being told to do and behaving in ways as if they uh, as if they are the right thing to do and they're not questioning or pushing back. So I was cut out of my child's life because I questioned the efficacy of cross-sex hormones for a teenager. What are the side effects? What's the medical e efficacy? What's the history of this? What psychologists and psychiatrists and what organizations are saying that this is a good idea? And there are no good answers for that question. But for people who ask it, there is a tremendous degree of social and cultural pressure to say, you must go along, you must affirm. We have legal mechanisms, we have institutionalized mechanisms. Doctors tell parents, would you rather have a live son or a dead daughter? And these are the kinds of mechanisms that our society is imposing on people who question this ideology. And we are deep, deep down this road of abuse and the outcomes are atrocities. The incoming head of WPATH, that's the World Professional Association of Transgender Health, said in a recent article that yes, children who are given these drugs at 10 or stage two, that's a stage of puberty, uh, will never have sexual function in their lives. They will never de uh, develop the secondary sex characteristics they will never be able to have an orgasm. They will never be able to appreciate the joy and the pleasures of intimacy with another human being. And will we'll never ever know that part of themselves. And failing to develop those secondary sex characteristics, assuming a path of, 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 of genital reconstruction or, or uh, you know, fake, uh, pseudo opposite sex characteristics like fake penises and 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 neo vaginas now talking about using tilapia skin to create neo vaginas in in cross sex kids who are never going to ever have sexual function or pleasure in their lives anyone who disagrees with these kinds of atrocities faces uh unbelievable hatred and attacks in Canada, there's an organization called antihate.ca, and these are self-appointed moral authorities. In fact, they receive significant funding from the federal government, and they slander people on their website for questioning these ideologies. So we have official government endorsement of and pressure uh, onto people who question the, the reasonableness of these kinds of interventions. Let me be clear, human beings have been around in this configuration, in this biology for about 300,000 years. And never, never before the 1960s have we ever had a concept that gender is a social construction. And never have we ever, for the last 15 years or so, ever thought that trying to change the sex of children was a good idea. Yet today we are doing it on large scales, the numbers are, are exponentially exploding and anyone who questions this is being called a hateful bigot. My name is Shannon B. Douglas. This is While We Were Asleep.